I hope you all are getting ready for a rip roaring adventure. Woohoo! <clears throat> the Jeff Stacy interrogation is one to behold. Oh boy! See this? It was a toss-up between this and Down Hour, but I also could have done Jay Refner, who I also think his voice, like that's a Mickey Mouse voice. Jeff Stacy gets a lot of the uh, flack for being the Mickey Mouse predator, but Jay yeah. Refner was—he's the one where his voice completely changes when. His daughter. His yeah. Son. Yeah, it starts off like normal, and then it just gets higher and higher. <laughs> yeah. It's a stress response that dries out your vocal cords. Yeah. Happens a lot <laughs> in interrogations. It's ripping time. <laughs> Mighty ripping Morpher Rangers. <laughs> Morphal. This chat is so slow on this uh, on OBS. Oh. I'm sure you said that from the chat, but it has not yet appeared to me. Weird. Uh, Interrogation causes the body to produce natural helium. <laughs> In a way. Yeah. I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of interrogations with a lot of squeaky people. They get higher and higher as the uh, the room fills with helium. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's close enough to five minutes. I'm shutting down the music and turning on the theme song. You're listening to FFOP Radio. Reach the eye. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the show. My name is Dave, and this is an FFOP live thing. It's Flamingo Friday. We got something special planned. I mean, you all know what we're here for. We're going to be going over uh, the <laughs> Jeff Stacy of To Catch a Predator infamy. Uh, his, like, arrest, interview, and processing. So, I don't know. It's not a super long breakdown, so I figured it'd be a good one to start with outside of the... Uh, what were we just doing with Big Sam? I can't remember. Mac. Oh, yeah. Justin McFedridge. Justin McFedridge. Yeah, so part two of that coming soon. So in the meantime, this is a nice, it's half an hour worth of interrogation footage and whatnot. So, so we'll stretch it out to two hours. Stretch it out to an hour and a half, two hours, <laughs> something like that. I listened to one of the old podcasts again, and it's been long enough that the pain intro sounds weird. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been a while. It's been quite a while. Oh, I also, you've all may probably also noticed the new transitions I got. Check this one out. Here yeah. comes the footage. It looks like like PowerPoint transitions. Yeah, I'm trying to make this look as uh, unprofessional as possible. It's going pretty <laughs> good. So here he is. What, we're, what you can see here is Jeff face down in the dirt, and the cops are all over him. He just left the house with Chris Hansen. So we'll, uh, we'll pick up there and see what happens to to uh jeff stacy and i printed out oh crap i left it in the other room but i guess i don't really need it because that doesn't really happen here i was gonna say in, in any other technique or other technique in, in any other interrogation video i would go over the read technique again like i did with uh dmac but this one is such like shooting fish in a barrel like it says in the video here it's interview and processing because it is it's just an interview it's not an interrogation and it like becomes farcical Toward the end, obviously. So let me mm -hmm. get this keyed up for you and we'll get going. Nice transition. Before mm. long, you'll be doing wipes like George Lucas. Yeah, you like that? Hopefully. Can you hear me? Yeah. What's your name? Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. Let me know oh, if you need to. Jeff. Jeff. Can't hear or anything. Say that again. <laughs> Turn him around. Turn him up. You're 29? 25. Okay. You think? How old are you? 
I think I'm 25. This is a great way to start. Like, they you hate him. Influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medications? I'm sure Are you uh, having any mental disabilities to prevent you from understanding what's going on here? I have epilepsy. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to read you your rights. If you have any questions, you... Uh... Yeah, it's so funny. Like, these... The To Catch a Predator detectives are some of my favorite, like the investigators. Like, now the talking heads are great, too. And, like, you know, over time, we could probably talk about them at some point. Mm -hmm. But the 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 point of that all is, like, the these guys, especially here where Jeff Stacy was, I think it was Ohio, uh, you, you'll see it as it comes up. They are no-nonsense, not fucking around. And, and with all the evidence that they get out of these investigations, I can't fault them for it. It's, uh... <sighs> It's where, like, John Dudinsky is trying his hardest to be, like, very professional and very good at his job. These guys are like sledgehammers where he's a, a fine chisel. Yeah, Greenville, Ohio. And he yeah. was 27, so he wasn't even right about his age. He's an idiot. But he also said he was 21. Yeah, into the decoy. Mm -hmm. Do you understand the words? You tell me, okay? Just be shot. You have the right to remain silent. I already you asked you to that? be shot. Yeah. Anything you say can be used against you in a court. You understand that? Of law. <laughs> you have the right to talk to a lawyer and have a lawyer present with you while you're being questioned, if you wish. You understand that? Why do they still have him laying down? You can't afford up to hire <laughs> yeah, a lawyer. That's how they busted him. One will be appointed. I think it's funny that he keeps prolonging it by after each question going, do you understand that? Or after well, yeah. each statement. Like, and he's the only one with very few exceptions that does that. Everybody else goes, da, 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 do you understand? Like, especially like cops out on the thing like this, they got to be fast. Well, they but don't. He's oh. going the extra mile to be like, do you understand that? Like rubbing yeah, it in. Yeah, smash his face in the dirt while he's asking. <laughs> well, he's holding up his shoulder. You can see him there. Important question it's if you wish to understand that. <laughs> Yes. You can decide to answer questions now without all your present. If you want. <laughs> if you want. You will still have the right to stop answering questions anytime. All you have to do is tell us. Do you understand that? Yes. You have any questions about the rights I just read to you? No, no. Okay. Go. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. You can let him up now. Sack of crap out of my sight. <laughs> That is noisy ass coat. It's a windbreaker. Sweet ass it's, windbreaker. No, it's thicker than a windbreaker. This is Ohio. Oh, so it's one of those. Okay, it's got a lining in it. Yeah, it's like it's nylon. Maybe it's like Gore Tex. <laughs> like, maybe this is just me, but there's something about nighttime and the sound of gravel underfoot that is like very visceral. Mm. To me, it's like cathartic. It brings you back to like summer barbecues and stuff. Like, you know, everybody has gravel here, at least. So you'd always walk around like that warmth. Everybody's out at night. You know, it's and then to see it here, like with Jeff Stacy getting led into like this portable building of a <laughs> police station is uh, quite the juxtaposition. Oh, plus, let's, you can obviously see a little bit of it here, but, like, take a long minute to drink in the atmosphere. Like, the wall, wall paneling, like, the flooring, the lighting, everything in this place I love. Kayla says uh, they can have a lawyer, they can refuse to answer questions, and they can stop answering any time, but they never stop answering anyway. Never. <laughs> if they start, they do not stop. Look at this place. All the windows that are like, it's hilarious. It reminds me of like my, one of my buddies in high school had a, his family had a cabin, which was just a trailer up in the woods. And that's what this reminds me of. It had like that fake wooden paneling wood, to like yeah. give that. And like there was a, a semi wood burning stove in there, but it still felt inauthentic because on the outside it was like, you know, aluminum siding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is an early one, so the camera stays the whole time. It's not like with uh, Dustin, like when they leave after they get a little B-roll. Like this is the, like the NBC camera footage. Oh, because they're right. Yeah. Now is this right by the house? Uh, I don't know how far it is from the house. 
So like the NBC cameraman just rode with them. Yeah, they they had a ton of them. I'm sure because like in the early days they wanted as much of this because they didn't know what they were gonna use. Right. So in the early days like this, we get Don Hour, we get Stacy, um, Jay Refner as aforementioned. Like a lot of the stuff, they were there the whole time. Hmm. Slide that chair back against the wall. <laughs> Jeff, I'm uh, Deputy Green from the Dark County Sheriff's Department. This is Deputy Tom Nichols. Okay. I want to ask you a few questions. Is that all right? Okay. It's okay. Okay. I'm epileptic. Oh, this is a little light. Look at that shirt that cop has on. Okay, so I want to see. You can see the boom mic there. This is hilarious. Like, there's actual film cameras mm -hmm. in there. There's one of these where I think it's, oh, God, who did they interview? Maybe it was Kenneth Brinkman. But, like, the, the two detectives working it look like a father-son duo. And I was <laughs> hoping that was the case here, but it's not. But I do like this guy. I'm not sure about the dude with the mustache. But, like, they're so gruff. And it's, like, bad cop, grumpy cop. Mm. But, like, it's grumpy in, like, a not overly harsh way. So it's, like, gr like a, gr a grumpy, grumpy grandpa. grandpa. <laughs> not, like, a grumpy police officer who's, like, fuck you, you piece of trash. It's just, like, a, a paternal man. gruffness. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey Douglas, Stacy. Last name again? Stacy. Stacy. S-T-A-C-Y. Yes. What's your social security number? Uh? Oh, damn. Boop. Yeah, they, I mean, he's, he passed away now anyway, so. Yeah. R.I.P. This has been up for a while. Yeah. Okay. What's your address, Jeff? Just something about the way he's he looks and is sitting and in that giant, like, coat that he took from his dad. Yeah. Just feels like this is more like a kid who snuck out to go to like a friend's to eat Totino's pizza rolls and got caught and not someone who was like hyper aggressive on the oh yeah no like, it, yeah. he looks yeah he looks like you're right he looks like he like snuck into a movie without getting a ticket yeah he's like a 14 year old <laughs> who's like trying desperately to grow a mustache <laughs> boom still a social that was the address Ohio. oh Ohio What's your date of birth? 3879. Uh, Are you under the influence of any drugs or alcohol tonight? That's a good question. No. no. What's the highest grade of school you, that you finished? College. College? How far in college did you go? Two year technical school. It's amazing how far a lot of these guys go in school, too. Like, they get asked that a lot. And the ones that bring it up unprovoked, I think, are the funniest. But very few of them are like stupid like david schumacher or like a lot of the, they all have like competent positions in society and yeah. you know all the benchmarks thereof so it's always weird to me when they're like oh wh how much school do you like maurice wolan he went to like probably 12 years of medical school all said and done oh yeah all right i guess the first question is why did you come to the, to the house <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This checks out. What type What's of girl? Screen name. Single Texas guy. Single is that all? Texas. I think that is. is it it's so single fun. Texas guy for fun. Yeah. How would you not know it? Number one. But it's so funny since it's more of an interview instead of an interrogation, and he's basically just having to dot the I's and cross the T's because it's nice to have all the evidence, but for whatever reason, confessions are still like the gold standard in law enforcement. So if you can just get him verbally them, him, them, whoever the suspect is, get them to say yes and, or agree to the things that they can verify. It, like it makes law enforcement cream their jeans over it. Well, and you know, remember that there was one, who was it where Chris Hansen had the wrong chat log he probably could have gotten away if he hadn't said what his screen name was like if because if it wasn't him well no they would have arrested him i mean it's not like he could have walked out of there and been like yeah big misunderstanding he showed up to a sting house no i like, know i'm just saying like his lawyer could have tried to get him off on some kind of technicality well no like they, all, a lot of them got off on technicalities anyway because right. 
one reason or another. But yeah, the that's the thing. Like there was for to catch a predator, it was secondarily a law enforcement operation, but mostly just damn good TV. Yes. Who are you coming to see today? What was her name? Guess it's Sandy's widow. Another thing that you're going to notice here is an interview versus an interrogation. An interrogation, there would be a decent chunk of rapport building. But again, like there's no veneer here. Like it's all just the same shit. Like in every other interrogation that I would like to talk about eventually, they've got to build that rapport in the beginning because they've got evidence that they're holding behind their, you know, hands and they want to play that dance at cat and mouse to get them to admit to things so they don't have to bring it up so they can say well you know maybe you knew about it because you said it but here it's just a straight road map of like i feel like all these dudes must have got a checklist oh yeah all the detectives are like here are the questions to ask make them confirm this 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 and this and that's what's so great about this too is it's like a a fast food version of a five-star meal like all the all the beats are here, except for like the appetizer, obviously. We're not getting any rapport. But the rest of it's here is just like making them having to confirm everything that was happened without having to do the dance of like maybe it was an accident or maybe this or yada yada yada. Like we're friends, you know, there's different types of crimes and like get it off your heart and all those other mm-hmm. cliches. That was tough. Do oh, you know her text tough. name? Oh. Or uh Name you took chatted with her on the internet with? I believe it. I don't think he even asked for it. I she asked for his name. I think he told her hers, room. but obviously. Mm. It was like a 20 minute chat. When was this? A fast last mover. Night. Yeah, he's what perverted justice would call a last fast night. mover. How long have you known her? This, this last night? How long did you talk to her? 13 minutes. You don't know? Oh, also, like for the uninitiated, for some background on Jeff here, he sent initially he sent two pictures with the heads cropped off that were of like hot bodied 20 year olds. Nice. And then when it started to become a reality, he sent her a close up of his ugly mug that made his nose look like the size of a dinner plate. (laughs) And like this should have been a warning for Jeff. When the first two images that went out were like of six pack abs, tan skin and no hair. And the third one is this face that you're seeing right now, like ultra close 13 mustache hairs and all, you know, and and th- then the girl was like, Oh yeah, that's totally cool. You're still cute. Like what? Yeah. Anyone there, in the right mind would have been like, huh? There's some things in some of the chat logs that are kind of like a tell. But the people, I mean, obviously All of them are now. Tells. Like, it's nothing but a roadmap to a jail cell. Like, they never express anything emotionally. Like, the decoys, they never get into their backstory, essentially. Like, it, it's all red flags, left, right, front, and center. It's nuts. Well, yeah, and they don't Did you know how old the person reciprocate in, like, the visit? sexual talk. Yeah, nor do they send so pictures. Much. Right. But these guys are so horned up over their attention. own fantasies. You didn't pay attention. So that's Jeff's strategy, FYI. He's going to say he didn't pay attention or he didn't know how old she was and cling to that like a dying man to a raft in the ocean. And and he like this detective will get at him, but we'll see what happens. He could just say he's dyslexic. Yeah, but he didn't. He didn't even do like what, what so Dustin no did. Like, I thought she was 17 instead of 13. He yeah. just goes, I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah. He thought she was 18. Yeah, or he says he thought she was 18, but it was never, ever, ever brought up that she was 18. No. And that defense doesn't last long. The Sadie, the smarty, ring a bell with you? I guess. Yeah? I and you, guess. you chatted with her last night? Yeah. Up until like 12 a.m. in the morning? 12 a.m. Okay. in the morning? <laughs> Do you remember reading this? Because he typed it to you. Yeah, I don't read those. You don't read those. That's your chat. <laughs> yeah, but I don't read. That's the you stupidest thing I've ever heard, no, Jeff. I don't read. I don't read. It's just talking. It's just talking. So when you told her, when she told you 
she was 15, you just ignored it. It's just talking. It's just talking. I, that's the other thing he says, too. He's like, it's Chris Hansen, if you watch the, the Predator aspect of it, or like the raw side of it, was incredibly frustrated. Jeff is as obstinate now as he was when Chris first met him. Uh, but that's the thing. Chris didn't have the gruffness and the handcuffs to keep him in spot. So he had to like do that dance too. And it's so funny to have him sit here and be like, I don't know. Like I wasn't even reading like how in a, in a chat situation, how do you claim you didn't read it? You showed up at the house, right? Not sad. You understand what kind of trouble you're in here tonight? Yes. What, tell me what kind of trouble you're in. Probably jail. <laughs> no, what, what did you do wrong? Probably jail. jail. Solicit a minor. For what? I guess sex. I guess. Sex. I guess. I guess. What, what, was you, what was your plans tonight when you, when you arrived with this 15-year-old girl? Mm. Just to talk. Well, that's not what the, your, your log reflects. I know, but it's an internet. I just say whatever comes to mind on the internet. It's an internet. An internet. It's just one. There's his right. He said whatever comes to mind. <laughs> so would you like to <laughs> me off to scare your mind? <laughs> mm -hmm. You say that to everyone mm -hmm. you chat with? Mm -hmm. Men, Men women, women, children, mm -hmm. mops. Mm -hmm. Everybody, all the and time. like, that's another like how, on what planet is this worked, in his mind where he goes, oh, how do you? The text was like, you say you want to suck me off. And he go, I say it to everybody. Like, does that make it better? Like, is is that in your mind? Be like, oh well, since you say it to everybody, I'll give it a pass. Like, you're just a weirdo who asks if they will, who, who asks everyone he knows if they will suck him off. Kale says that's great. In the Hanson interview, he claims he says this stuff to everyone, too. Asks if they're a cop, too. <laughs> yeah. He says, okay, that's the other thing in the, um, which I recommend you watching to catch a predator. But when he's interacting with Chris, that's that's part of it is like, he's just like, I don't know. I don't, she didn't, you know, I don't, uh, it, it, it wasn't until Chris was like, this is illegal that he started to crack. And now that he's in handcuffs, the voice is at maximum. Uh, <laughs> maximum. <pitch>. Maximum Stacy. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he brings up his druggy friends. I forgot about that. He's like, I had druggy friends. And he's like, why were you concerned? Because Chris Hansen was like, why are you concerned if she was a cop? He's like, well, I had druggy friends. And my druggy friends told me. That bullshit lie that if the, if you ask a cop if they're a cop, they have to tell you they are. No, they can legally uh, lie to you in any you situation. Used, uh, for uh, this chat, where is it? The parents' house. Oh. Okay. Uh, did you call her on the phone tonight? No. Did she call you? No. Maximum Stacy. How did you know where? How to get there? She gave it to me over the internet. Over the internet, you never called her on the phone. No. Do you have a cell phone? No. Like, wow. Living at home, talking on his parents' computer, so doesn't have a cell phone in 2006, which I guess is passable. I don't so know. So you had no intention of having oh, sex with this Oh, girl. six. I was a senior in high school and I had a cell phone. I'm calling it now. Okay. But you just, you just said you came to that house to solicit the 15-year-old for sex. Did you not? Did That's you just say that? That's what they told me I was doing. When I, was I asked you what you were doing. At the house. I was just going to meet him. What happens, happens. That's the way I look at it. One of the things he admitted to Chris Hansen was that, uh, he didn't, you know, he didn't come for sex, but maybe a kiss or two. Mm. He said, maybe a kiss or two. But that's it. Jeff Stacy's a gentleman. Okay, so that was still a possibility illegal. that still could have legal. happened. Could have. <laughs> if the opportunity would have rose, she would have been there. I don't think I had no to sell you in 06. <laughs> Ah, that's what I was happen. saying. I, you, Kayla, sprung to mind immediately as well as Adam. Cause, oh, yeah. Yeah, he may still have a landline. Hmm? Yeah, someone could have been home too. Okay. Did you send these pictures to her? <sighs> yes. Are those pictures yeah. of you? 
No. Those are the head cut off ones. Yeah. Did you say that she believed uh, when you sent them? Look at those pictures, though, on that table. They look like World War II era, like Cephia, like weather, like they've been in a pocket for a long time. <laughs> these are fresh. Like he just sent these and they were presumably printed out today. But look at them. They look like old treasure maps. They like cut them out on like... Um um, and the printer paper and they had low ink. Yeah, or like with zany scissors and shit. They <laughs> look like they've been through hell. And he's like, are these pictures of you? And no, they're just somebody else without a head. The secretary was a scrapbooker. So she Shh. cut it out all fancy. I'm sure. Did you represent him to be you? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, look at him. Out. Like they're so... They're Why like baseball cards that have been in spokes for a year and a half. Sure someone else like that. <laughs> Because it's just fine game. It's fine game. But I guess I did something wrong. And internet is fun and games. What is I it? guess hey, I Joe. did something wrong. What's up, Joe? I guess I showed up to talk to a minor. <laughs> I guess. Okay. Yeah. Talk to people my your, own uh, age. Your transcript of your uh, chat log indicates uh, you asked a lot of sexual questions <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> okay. Do you agree with that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. sure. See, we're just ticking the boxes. Jeff is so, like, checked out. I don't know if he's having a break, like, breakdown, I mean, but... <sighs> he's probably partially in shock and also, yeah, probably having a complete but, nervous breakdown. But he's been like this. Watch the original footage from the interview with Chris. He's like this from the jump. He's, like... This is an emotional roller coaster for Jeff Stacy, and it's still a flat line for any other living being and most dead fish. Maybe he's also high. In the, in the transcript, she shows or or on something she's not 15. Like, who knows? And then you say, Do you like older guys? So you had to read that she was 15 to type to her, Oh, do you like older guys? Is that's got you there, Jeff. Right. You say that was true? I guess so. And then, uh, See, and like in these long silences where he's going through the questions, you can see him like the detective, I mean, like writing with his pen and stuff. And I go, what is he writing? Like all he's saying is like, I guess so, or yes, or whatever. And like, uh, it's not like he's uh, writing down all of Jeff's musings. Quote unquote, I <clears throat> guess so. <laughs> like what's going on over there? You go on to say, would you like to get me naked? Do you remember typing that? Yeah, but that's mm, just normal things. And then she says, I wonder, you, you mean for real? And you can go, yeah, it could be fun. Remember typing that? Yeah. Because he's going to do a laundry list of these things right now. And I'm wondering if it is, like, just becomes so blasé for him that, like, he's throwing away his notepad. And he's now just looking at the chat log, get, putting a hash mark next to everything he acquiesces to. <laughs> Just be like, okay, yes, yes, yes. Like, double, like, this is confirmation on a level that is impossible to get on literally any other level of true crime. And I think that's what's so weird about it. Yeah. Because it, it's not, did he or didn't he? It's, yeah, he did. And now we need to, like, you know, every sheet that you fill out will have three behind it. And each one of those will have three carbon copies of it behind that. And so it's just so funny to be like, did you write this? Yes. Did you write this? Yes. Did you write this? Yes. Well, I wonder <laughs> if these things also, because like um, we watched an interview, whatever we were watching with Chris Hansen talking behind the scenes about stuff. Predator Raw. Yeah. He, before like the Predator comes into the build and into the house, he has the chat logs and he has pieces highlighted that he knows he's going to say to them. Right. I wonder if the cops have that too, or if he's just skimming through the chat being like, uh, no, I think, this? I think they definitely had, cause they had to give like trigger statements or something. No, I think his was, his copy was just so he could get a nice juicy interview. Mm. And God knows how many people were actually working on that. Did he do it all himself? Who knows? But, like, an intern could probably do the same thing. Just, like, read this fucking thing and find the juiciest bits that you mm -hmm. think would be hilarious on TV. But, yeah, but who knows? But these guys, I think the police do get whatever chat ahead of time as soon as possible, too. Because, like, with Dudinsky, or, or this guy's got a copy of it that he's flipping through actively, so it's not like he had to memorize it. 
But Jeff's was like three pages or something ridiculously right. small. Like, And it was the day prior to him showing up, right? Or like the day of. It was so fast. It was ridiculously, stupidly fast. Then you say to her, would you ride? Or <laughs> me. Do you remember tracking that? <laughs> yes. What if he said no? Like, does it matter? For, uh, for he would just get browbeat by this, this deep-throated detective, and he'd be like, what, seriously? You said and he'd be like, yes. <laughs> What's going to happen to me? You're going to be taken to Dark County Jail. Please, God. You're going to be uh, charged with attempted, uh, attempted unlawful sexual conduct with a minor, okay? It's amazing, too, and this is you, what you ju what just witnessed is not unique to Jeff Stacy, even though at most of the time in these at these junctions anyway, they have done all the online shit, come to the house, talk to Chris Hansen, run through a lawn, possibly gotten <laughs> tackled, arrested and taken to a police station and or uh, RV, depending on the episode. And the amount of dudes who were like, OK, interrogation over you're going to jail they go what i'm going to jail like i mean you're literally arrested he, you're handcuffed in handcuffs they read you the miranda rights but it's just incredible to me that you know we just become desensitized to these things as a culture like we you know miranda rights are always on tv if you watch any crime show you've heard them a zillion times and that's what happens here i feel like nobody takes these things with any seriousness like not even the handcuffs in some cases like yeah. i watched an entire interrogation that was like an hour and 45 minutes where they kicked open the dude's door put him in those those shackles where like your waist is chained oh your yeah. wrists are down and, like your, a, and your ankles are also shackled. Yeah, it's like an eye and he sits in this interrogation room and chit chats like nothing is the matter. And like they read him his rights and he's like, hey, what's going on? Like not. And that's how you can tell when people are guilty, too. They don't ask what's going on. Mm -hmm. Like if someone hauls me out of my bed and puts me in shackles like that can't let my my hands move away from my navel i'm gonna have a few questions <laughs> but they throw his ass in this room and they're like two detectives come sit down they're like hey tell me about yourself what yeah no i'd be like tell um, me about yourself i'm going to ape shit that's how you can tell if someone's guilty i, I maybe there are some people out there who would just take stormtroopers beating down their doors and abducting them in the night you know with gentle good humor but i feel like the rest of us be like what the fuck uh, Joe says, I'd imagine that this is very prepared as far as the chat logs go. Kayla says, maybe they think everything up to this point is just foreplay. <sighs> but there's not children involved in this part. <laughs> it's old men. That, that's the th it, it, it's just crazy to me. It's, it's got to be the desensitization of it all. Like, uh, and maybe also, too, I'll throw this in there as well. When the cameras come out, that probably builds a fourth wall for them. Mm-hmm. Because, like, when Dustin, like, those cameras, you know, he, he even brings it up during his interview. Uh, it's like, okay, well, I'm just on a show and I might be okay. Right. And it's some of these people may think that it's kind of like, oh, just you'll sleep it off in a holding cell. Like, if you were, you know, believe I don't think anybody thinks something. that. I know nobody, I don't think anybody thinks, takes it that lightly. But especially with Jeff here, like, there's a boom mic above his head. We saw that earlier. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to, I, I would imagine in this situation, it would be hard to take things it, w with any sort of gravity when it's so absurd. Please don't. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Classic. I didn't I'm know. I'm a child molester. Well, evidently, uh, you were going to molest oh, a child. Yeah. Because the, uh, everything indicates that. <laughs> you understand? Like, that would have been a great bird, but since this guy's so old, he's like, well, I, it looks like that tonight you, you were going to molest the child. Like, you can tell he wanted to, like, nail mm -hmm. Jeff to the wall, but he's, like, <sighs> he stumbled. He must have been writing a note or something, but you know he wanted to do it. She said she was 15. Everything and you knew that. she was 15. You went to the house to solicit sex with a 15-year-old. Did you I know? I did not know. Right here it is. You had to know. Oh, I don't pay attention. 
I, uh, this is not also unique to Jeff. Like people, I don't know why, like this is so entertained in, in true crime and interrogations. I guess because there's no other choice, but the fact that you can get around lying just by being like, I don't remember like Nancy Brophy, her case recently is, is a great example of that. If you're going to pull the, I don't remember card. Don't it's fucking stupid because it, what it illustrates is you, you're lying. Because if you really can't remember, you would have gaps in your memory that would be there organically. But if you're going to be interrogated by the police, a prosecution, or literally anyone paying attention, you're going to remember details of things that you should have lost if your memory is bad. If you simply cannot remember the time in which you are being accused of a crime except after and before, clear as a bell, not going to work. So don't even bother. <laughs> uh, Kayla says, when these guys first get brought in, the mic guy should yell, here comes the boom, son. <laughs> yeah, just, or like, I feel like every once in a while you should see like a really fuzzy microphone just like hit them in the forehead every <laughs> once in a while. They're like, ah, ah. ah. <laughs> All right, I'm on TV. Yeah, I don't know. The, the, there's a lot of things going on here and it's hard to get out. That doesn't get it, okay? I really that didn't know that she was that 15! It doesn't flow, right? Phone number. I'm sorry, I didn't know. You got phone number. Now, what's your home phone number, Jim? Calms down immediately. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> okay, that was the first utterance. He becomes a suicidal maniac. You know, from here on out, spoiler alert, but I mean, this is legendary in the community. We can work this out, all right? No, I really am just going to slip my f***ing throat. And it's so funny, too, because I realized that in this, like, high-stress situations like this, I'm sure police get the, like, I'm going to kill myself thing a lot because you know, you, you're not in an interrogation room for fun reasons, usually. So it's funny how they have to entertain him for a little while here, but after a while... He's just like one of those talking flowers that if you say something to it, it'll say it back to you and spin a little bit. He gets <laughs> as much recognition as and attention. You relax, all right? No, I'm just going to kill myself. Put me in jail and I'll hang myself. I don't care. Filthy mother. Hmm? Filthy mother. Oh, you got to take his He can see he's resting his head on the shelf there, yeah. which I think is kind of yeah. funny. Yeah, what's your area code? 513. 513. Okay. I'm just going to shoot myself. Shoot myself. You ever been arrested before, Jeff? No. For anything? No. Been in any other trouble? No. No? I didn't know. Okay. It's amazing how he can go from, like, completely hopeless and, and apparently willing to kill himself to, like... What? No. Five one three. Uh, <laughs> he's like he's not really like the Mickey Mouse whatever predator. He's more like Eeyore. Well, yeah, it's it, it's mostly in his Chris Hansen interview because this was not basically available to the public at large for a long ass time. Mm. So you can see his voice is kind of doing because like in the initial thing, and then when the cameras came out, yeah. But now he's like, uh, it's sort of finally coming together and sinking in. It, it's sort of pitching back down. Joe says he sounds like the, a little kid who's threatening to take his ball and go home. Totally. Well, you don't want to do that. Yes, I am. Seems I'm going to kill myself. Split my throat. Put it on TV. I don't care because I'll die before it hits the air. All right. Yeah, he's ripping it up, man. He's like, I'll do it this way. I'll do it this way. I'll do it that way. He doesn't know how he's going to do it. So no way is good enough. Anywhere. No. But you can see immediately, like the last time that detective said, oh, you don't want to do that, will be the last time anybody acknowledges this shit. Mm -hmm. Until, and we'll get to it. Huh? What? Yes, I will. Doesn't matter, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself and watch myself die. He's going to watch himself. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite Jeff Stacy quotes. I'm going to kill myself and watch myself die. He's going to do it in front of a mirror. 
Yeah, I I always wondered what he meant by that, but I think he just like he's trying to be philosophical and or poetic, and it's not working. Well, he's a college graduate. You know Technical college. Oh yeah. I'm gonna kill myself. Unless the technical aspect was philosophy. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is a good part. That's all I have. That's all I need. That's all I want. <laughs> That's another great quote. Yeah. That's all I have. That's all I need. That's all I want. Now listen to everything, myself. and it's gonna be hitting the tabletop. Put a bullet right in my head. <laughs> Put a bullet right in my head. <laughs> Can I come again? Why? You got so many keys? He's got fucking like eight key rings. There is. He doesn't say why. No, and I wish he had really stuck to that. Like, he was going to keep saying, you know, the death threats anyway. Like, hey, give, give it a couple whacks, man. Why does he have all those goddamn keys? Let's see if it's a sexual or I'm better than... Oh, here we go. Yeah, look at them all. Jesus Christ. Like, th look at that. What is that for? And they're all like... Various shapes and sizes. It's not all the houses. There could be like a skate key on here. Look at that. Wow. He's got a tire gauge in his pocket. All in that big ass puffy coat of his. He just likes to carry around like a weighted jacket. <laughs> yeah, his EDC is worthless shit. That's all I want. <laughs> this would just be putting all you. Maybe, and this is just spitballing here, but maybe like halfway through this interview, Jeff Stacy's like, you know what? I'm starting my own death metal band, and he's like doing the lyrics right now to try and memorize them. Oh, so Kayla, he actually worked at a, or well, one of his jobs was he worked at a kung fu um, school for kids. Um, so it could be keys for that. Kayla's well, no, I think. In this white right now during this interview, he was employed as a uh, deli worker. Oh yeah, okay, that's what Kayla said. She said, "I think uh, he said he works at a deli. Those look like janitor level key collections." Yeah, like that's mm. that's janitor level of like a complex and or multiple story building. Well, it's like freezers and like what all the, the things. But no, like there's no way. No, no, no. Okay, I'm going to keep going. I don't even this. want it. I'm going to be dead. Good evidence. I'm going to be dead. I don't even care anymore. Life's not worth it. I feel it. like this is where he snapped. Like, because he keeps but repeating the same thing over and well, over and over no, again. No, this is a, this is pouting. This is not like, this isn't like a snapping of any variety. He is just doing it for sympathy and trying to be that sniveling kid who, like, is so annoying that the teacher lets him go because he's just a fucking pain to deal with. Mm. And, spoiler alert, it's not going to work. The law doesn't work like that. And I just want to die. Yeah. It's just back to doing their paperwork. I love these dudes. Do, do, do. And like none of these guys, except for Todd West, ask for a lawyer. I feel like. I mean, I'm sure there's others that have asked for lawyers. Yeah, plenty but have, but. When, when given the opportunity to fight, flight, or freeze, people, you know, one, if there's no physical danger, they will try to fight. And. You know, when you've got any situation, but especially like this, where they've got shit on you that you know, a lot of people want to get in front of that and pre-explain. Mm. But that's the stupidest thing you can do. Yeah. You have to ignore your intuition. Who's the Who's the guy that had his mom as the prosecutor? That was Jay Refner. Huh. Okay. a prosecutor of a neighboring county. Jeff, okay. just uh, Jeff, do you mind? Would you uh, 
allow us to search your vehicle? Give what? us permission just to see what's in it. I guess. You will? <laughs> I okay, guess. Okay, sign it. Let me just put a bullet in my head. You right handed or left handed, Jeff? Right. <laughs> I'm going to take that right hand cup off so you can sign your name on that piece of paper, okay? Prepare yourself for TCAP history. Prepare yourself. It's coming up. There's nothing in there. Nothing in there. Is that your car or your yes. mom and dad's car? I think it's mine now. It's yours? I think it's I mine think. now. No. No. Any personal belongings? Lots of that. Lots of that? <laughs> no. You got any marijuana in there, Jeff? You smoking the hashish? Here we go. <laughs> Look at that shit. Like, he moved so slowly and he almost, he obviously moved too fast for his own comfort because he put it to his neck and stopped before the detective saw it and caught him. And now, look at this, like, half hearted, bro kick, weak ass, like, struggle for the pen. Like, what was even the point of that? I understand. Okay, yeah. I, the sympathy thing that he's shooting for isn't working. But, like, on what planet would, like, taking it up to, like, yeah, I'm going to stick a pen in my neck. Like, did, a lady did that. Pam Hupp, if you're familiar with her case, she um, killed her best friend who had cancer after getting her to change her will to give her all of her life savings. Nice. And framed her fucking husband for it. Fucking bitch. But she got caught and she snuck a pen into the bathroom and actually like wanted to end it. Didn't she showed up in her mugshot with two big old bandages on her neck. But that that's what you do. Like this was like, Nyeh. he just wanted to like fill in his mustache. She doesn't even know. He probably wasn't strong enough to even. But who knows? Like his paper skin, paper thin skin probably survives on Mountain Dew and Star Crunch. <laughs> Why'd you change them? Huh? Why'd you change them way they're on? Are you wanting, uh... You're acting up. I just put them on the Why'd you like change them? Let's get them. Mm. You about five minutes, right? You're trying to stick yourself in the fucking neck with a pen. Slowly. It's great how he seems more concerned with how the cuffs change than how the trouble he's in. <laughs> hey, now my hands are slightly uncomfortable. Hey, you tried I, to put a pen in your neck. Like, it, it's amazing what humans will do under extreme pressure. And it's hardly as bizarre as this, but for whatever reason, to catch a predator was just like a microcosm of weird idiosyncrasies. Because of all the other true cr crime stuff and interrogations I watch, nobody, I mean, I, I'm sure it's out there, but by and large, I guess the stuff that's released publicly or what's popular doesn't seem to have this many like people breaking under the pressure, but also not. Cause I don't think that that was a break again. I think that was like the weakest ploy in the world for them to be like, okay, guys back off. He's serious. And like, what are they, what does he expect him to do? Like undo the cuffs and like usher him gently to the front door and like push him outside like a baby duck. Give him all his keys back. Well, say, yeah, okay. load him back up with his 28 pounds of keys in his fucking <laughs> puffy yes. jacket. It is funny, though, that all the cops in and around the vicinity of Jeff here are super old. Like, the youngest one is that detective there with the mustache, and he's probably in his 50s. But, like, there's a 60-year-old, a 70-year-old wandering around. I guess, you know, it's just Jeff. <laughs> Watch your head. <laughs> Shut the hell up. Watch your head. Always go watch your head. Look at this undercover cop car. Yeah, back when they made those Thunderbirds before they made them again and then stopped. Mm. <laughs> they make him get out of the way for the camera crew. And you can see how big that thing is. He had to point the barrel of it into that uh, stock room. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. 
Okay, this is one of my favorite things you're about to see. That puffy, that puffy, but that big square on the wall. I guess it is puffy. It's where they have to put their heads when they want to um, pad search them or whatever. And if you're familiar with To Catch a Predator at all, they have um, Westerbeck, Kevin Westerbeck. When he shows up, I don't think he barely makes that. Oh, because he's so short. Thing. Yeah. It's so funny. But how many heads has that thing seen? Yeah. Jesus. I had down, keys, right? but they took them. Like the soft spoken manner that this guy has with Jeff, and like the, the, the sort of friendly hand in the back is so funny. And these guys go nuts. They like he goes into like the lining and shit. Yeah. But I mean, realistically, they make them change. So. Well, yeah, but I mean, it, this it's protocol. Probably it's protocol. Like this, even though these aren't, because like the, all of this is for the people on the street who are like violent criminals or whatever. These guys are just lame ass weirdos coming to get it on with kids. So they're, you know. Aside from the one guy who brought an arsenal in his mm. car, there's not a whole lot of chance of finding like needles sewn in places or like razor blades hidden or like. Well, I, I get I get that it's protocol, but I feel like if they're gonna make them change into a into like their you know the striped shit, well, they should ch them check them then. Well, no, they don't want a chance like any chance once they get their hands un handcuffed. You don't want to give them any chance at anything they might have. So you got to do that now. Because mm. if you're like, okay, go, you know, hit the bathroom and change, then they can shove what, any number of things up their ass or pull things out of their ass that are already there to, like, right. get you with them. Yeah. Kayla says that pad probably hasn't been cleaned COVID safe. Probably, probably, not. probably not. Jesus Christ. There should be, like, a constant spray bottle of bleach water next to it. Mm -hmm. One of those white rags, like at yeah. the gym. And make the person do it. Oh uh, no! This the guy with the uh, the soft the soft voice and the soft hands will do it. It's part of his. Cause like, I feel like these two officers. <laughs> it would, obviously, I don't think that things work like this. But at each station, there's like, at, at amusement parks, there'll be like two people working each section of the ride. <laughs> so they're like, they're just waiting there all day, like doing the whole like, do -do -do. waiting for someone to get arrested so they can do a pad search and push their head into the foam. And then when they get through their part of the line, it's like an assembly line uh, for criminals. <laughs> If you don't have a criminal coming through, you're probably bored and like Yeah, just talk about your day or yeah, like Yeah, playing twenty questions or something. Was. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna take these cuffs off of you, okay? And when I do I need to put your hands up on the wall, right? Have you seen Stranger myself. Things? Okay. Hands up on the wall, scumbag. Put them right there on the wall. Leave it right there for me, alright? I guess you probably have to have that kind of calm demeanor when you're doing this because somebody can just fucking like elbow you right in the face while you're doing something and you can be out cold. Yeah, I think that they adopt like the the doctorly tone where yeah. it's like a, a voice of authority, but it's very accommodating. Well, what I need you to do is take your coat off for me, okay? <laughs> oh, there it gets you a snuggie there, Jeff. Hee <laughs> hee. Yeah. Yeah. And this is another scene you'll see a lot of too. And every like behind, like after the crime has been committed, and yada yada yada, or doing this bullshit, there will always be like a one to four ratio of like working to bullshitting cops. Mm. And this is no different, obviously. Yeah. But it's a perfect well, example. You. Take your shoes off for me, okay? One at a time. Well, you don't want to take them off both at once? How can you do that? Jump really hard. <laughs> Like, not not to diverge from the action, because like you, the interrogation is over, obviously. But like, this is a nice shot. Before it got to like a cookie cutter and got very um, efficient in the lag last couple of episodes, they had time to stretch their legs and do shit like this. But it's so sad that it all hit the editing room floor mm. until much later, when like they were trying to milk it for all it was worth, because it was a cash cow, I'm sure. Yeah. Predator Raw came back for a lot of episodes. And it was interesting. Predator Raw. Uh, yeah. It was lazy. 
it's like when I liken it to this because like when you watch a true crime documentary on like Netflix, it's a single case stretched out for eight between six, eight or ten episodes. Mm -hmm. And you go, Jesus Christ. But I can find the same thing on YouTube from a dedicated content creator that can get me the whole story and all this alien details in a solid 45 to 90 minute chunk. Yeah. So, but that's the thing when money is involved and not passion, which is like sort of what's happening here, there's a little bit lost. Cause when like the tiger King, you know, as an example of true crime that made it to Netflix felt padded. Oh yeah. A lot of it feels like, <sighs> A hundred percent. Very few meaty chunks in this stew because it's so watered down. But that, but and it, it, I guess that's the point. To catch uh, to catch predator, the predator raw tapes. That's what it was. It was the same shit you already saw, maybe with a little extra. And then Chris saying very obvious stuff. He's not going to say anything controversial. He's not going to th- say anything clever. It's just like yo. Know, he showed up. He was wearing a t-shirt. He was Here t- comes this guy. Yeah, it's very um. I I get it, but whatever. Jeff looks like a oompa loompa a little bit. Mm-hmm. Let's get a drink. We'll get you a drink in here, okay? <laughs> Go ahead and set your shoes and socks down right here against this wall. My throat's a little dry. It sounds like this. I wonder how this building smells mm. like as you're going through all this and they're moving all this sterile equipment around and like the floors are obviously concrete and there's chips and stuff and all the weird paint choices and stuff. And then just the endless numbers of people that must churn through there every year. What does that place smell like? Probably just stale. I also, when the camera zooms out, I want to see if it does that. There we go. Okay. So it's hilarious to me that everybody uh, in all of the behind the scenes footage I've ever seen, every police station has one of these shitty ass, like $150 handy cam power shot or Nikon cool picks fucking cameras for their, I, I guess I get it because what do you, but it's so fun to me. I feel like everything in a police station is typically like so official and like it's made specifically for that job or whatever. Except for like the mugshot camera, which is always like they send like the new guy down to Best Buy with like 200 bucks to be like, get the cool pics 1350 uh, and be back in a half an hour. Personal gripe, I know, but still fucking crazy because they, they always have like the half shutter click. So it goes beep, 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 psh, click. <laughs> yeah, you take your glasses off. Camera, it still has the, like the film wine sound. It's all stock settings. Gonna put your glasses back on. The awful onboard flash. You turn your whole body and face that door for me. <laughs> Ugh, look at Jeff's bed head. It's so embarrassing. I remember when I was a kid, if I didn't have a chance to do my hair before I had to go someplace, constantly self conscious about the this essentially the this bed head. Well, bullshit. I think he also didn't he have a hat on too, which probably didn't help anything. I don't know. He showed up sans hat. Oh. Need you to turn and face the other door for me? There you go. No, he was like you napping tattoos, before this. Any birthmarks? Any surgical scars? Where you got surgical scar at? What? <laughs> cool guy like you, you shouldn't go. you have a tattoo? I just got to pick up his belly to show off his scars. Now, see, this is a law enforcement job I could probably do. Just sitting behind the computer, like, oh. <laughs> doing clerical stuff. And, like, what's your first name, your last name, this, that, or the other, and type that all in. Hey, get a uniform, a nice pension, not have to shoot anybody or be called a racist. Oh, yeah. Just work behind a computer. a dollar out of your personal property? <laughs> I'm going to drop it in a safe for you, okay? <laughs> I'm putting your name on this envelope that has a dollar in it. I feel like... You get in a year. I think like a, a dispatcher would be interesting. An interesting job. Also. Ah, I'm not really entertaining that job. Or the idea, rather. Can you spell your last name for me? That's T-A-C-Y. What's your middle name? 
middle name Jeffrey? Douglas. He looks like a Douglas. Mm -hmm. You know your mother's maiden name? Can. What is it? Can. Can? How do you spell that? C A N N. And what's her first name? I just zoom in on this shit. What are we doing here? <laughs> All right, the the artistic aspect of shooting is is Three, drying seven, up. Nine. Hey, Chatterbait Billy. <laughs> ride. <laughs> Let's say run. <laughs> Here's some water, Jeff. Okay. Like that. <laughs> so, so there, when you obviously when you get uh, into a police type situation, they're gonna offer you all that shit. Like, you want some cookies or something to drink or whatever. The funniest ones are when like, oh yeah, I can use some water, and they come back with those tiny little Dixie cups that is like I don't know an ounce and a half, because like because <laughs> it's you can do one of two things. You can do like the make them comfortable thing and bring them a bottle of water like mm -hmm. they did with the. Uh, you know, X, Y, Z, or like with Jeff Stacey here, where they give you like an open cup and it's so tiny and it's paper and it's always the shitty ones that are like cones. Yeah. Or like they're not <laughs> wax sealed. So they're actively dissolving as you drink from them. Like the hilarious convict cup. <laughs> He's still holding on to that. Everybody makes mistakes, Jeff. What's your current street address, Jeffrey? <laughs> I'll die. Anyway, my street Mill. address. Mill. Mill? Where's that at? Eleven and I'm gonna put a bullet right in my head. How? What's your zip code? <laughs> <laughs> bullet town. Deathville. <laughs> right What's your phone number? Five one three. They're not even waiting for him to get through with his weak threats. Mm -mm. your blood type, married, Jeffrey? Single, divorced? Single. Do you have any children? No. Looking to mingle, lady. <laughs> you right-handed or left-handed? Oh, here's another artsy Is shot. Right? Yes. This would be like a world's toughest prison documentary. Do you have any surgical scars, even though they just asked all these questions before? Right, look at how great the framing of that shot was. I mean, given the four by three aspect ratio back in the day, beautiful. I mean, it was the, it was Jeff's disgusting feet, but still. Four one three. I'm gonna jump and try to put up a train boulevard. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> he looks like a child molester. <laughs> yeah, it's just random everyday office shit for these guys. Is this your gross stuff, Jeff? Is this your dollar? No, that went in the safe already. Oh. They put all of the stuff in like a super cheap trash bag. Jeff, I got to ask you some medical questions. Oh, great. What I need to know is if you've been treated for any of the, any of the following, okay? Yeah, chlamydia, Are Jeff. Allergies to food or drugs? Coding. Coding? If you've been treated for anything, allergies? Arthritis, <laughs> asthma, arthritis, withdrawals, no. diabetes, no. epilepsy, yes, but no withdrawals, staining spells, no, doctor prescribed diet, no, urinary tract problems, no, ulcers, no, venereal diseases, no, you ever tested positive for HTV or hepatitis, no, heart or high blood pressure problems, no. Are you being treated for mental health problems? Yes. What are you being treated for? Don't know. You don't know? You don't know. Depression? Might be. Uh, Cheddar Bait Billy says, I wonder if he brought that de the decoy deli meats since he worked at the deli. Oh, my God. Wouldn't that be hilarious? He's like, hey, I brought you a pound and a half of smoked turkey breast. Like, <laughs> extra thin. Just like you like it, baby. <laughs> Bipolar? They never give you an exact answer. They just treat the symptoms. They don't give you a word. I, I, so this, what are you taking? This is weird. Like, they, if you're with a 
you know, whatever, an, a legitimate mental health professional, they'll definitely try and tell you what to do and what you have. Like, that's all that medicine can do is ascribe to you the things that we make up about the things that we experience. Like, so the fact that Jeff's like, ah, ah, they just don't tell you. What? Like, do you feel depressed, Jeff? That's my, what you have. Kayla says, how about tennis elbow for his ahem, online activities? Oh, he's got, <laughs> definitely got carpal tunnel. <laughs> you ever tried to kill or harm yourself? Yes. When was the last time? Five minutes ago. Months ago. <laughs> How'd you do it? Took seven different bottles of pills and drank about three fifths of alcohol. Three fifths of alcohol. Now, <sighs> seven <laughs> bottles of pills? Like, I want to, like, nobody has. Seven bottles of anything in their house, right? Unless you're like an extreme hoarder or extreme. Well, he lives with his parents. I don't give a shit. I live with my parents. Everybody's lived with their parents. Do you remember having seven bottles of something like that? I feel like this is your thing. This is what I'm getting at. The seven bottles are all disparate things like Benadryls and Tylenols and ibuprofen, maybe a Mucinex or two. Like people like Jeff who are so stupid like this don't understand that there are certain types of pills that people use traditionally to kill themselves. They don't literally just like run a hand through their medicine cabinet yeah. and get the Socrates and the fucking Ricola and all the other shit and mix it up into a big thing and choke it down. No, like it, it's a specific thing. Uh, Cheddar Pate Billy says the alcohol was Mike's. Um, Three fifths of a Mike's. Joe says, turns out they were Flintstones vitamins. Oh, yeah, you probably had some of those in there. Kayla said, sorry, Jeff. Tic Tacs don't count as pills. <laughs> I'm saying, like, seven bottles leads me to believe that they were all over the counter bullshit. Joe jo says, they were extra chalky, had to wash them down with something. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure. Like, he probably woke up in the morning with, like, Tom's dust <laughs> all over his face and shit. <laughs> Oh, I tried to slit my wrist. Oh, and I tried stabbing myself with a pen. Yeah, the pen thing back there. So I guess three Are you times. Are depressed or suicidal right now? Yes. yes. <laughs> Are you taking any medication? Yes. What are you taking? Cymbalta. He takes nothing for his seizures? If he's epileptic, yeah. he should be on, like, Keppra or something. Yeah, maybe he just got, like, a touch of the epilepsy. Just flashing lights gets him. That might be it. Yeah. Well, you don't have to have seizures all the time. What are you taking for your seizure? I don't have to take anything. See? What's this? Other, what was that last one for? Congestion. Okay. You're telling her about your Mucinex? P.S. Cymbalta's for depression, so... Just yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like... Nothing about Jeff makes sense. It's like he's not a real human being at times. And by at times, I mean always. Because, <laughs> like... Does he ask to call his mom at all? No. Oh. But, like, how checked out to reality do you... And other people in specific do you have to be to, like, think that anything that he said during this video that you have seen with me tonight, that any of that would fly anywhere? Yeah. Like I get, I get lying, and I get not wanting to be on the hook for the thing you obviously knew was wrong. But like being so feeble-minded and pathetic in one note about it, like, I it, does it make sense even to you? I like, are people that delusional? And obviously they are. I guess is what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. Any additional information that we should know about why you're here? Epilepsy and cerebral palsy. What? Cerebral palsy. He's pretending to be Dustin. Never know it anyway. I need a name and a number. What is your mother's name? What? Cerebral palsy? <laughs> Where did he get that from? You got Bell's palsy. So many palsies to get. I collected them all. You live with her? Yeah. Okay. Yep. At least he didn't bring her up all the time. Hmm. And this mama's third husband.
This is the most action these the people have seen all day. Yeah. Also, we found some map quest directions to a place in Lee Street in Albany, Ohio. Uh, also, I found a computer tower in your trunk, and we took that. Okay, that's something that comes up a lot. Why are there... And this is the early aughts, early 2000s. Computers are still relatively big and clunky. So many of these numbnuts have, like, full-blown towers and shit. Like, the, I get, like, spraying the laptop for whatever reason, even though Wi-Fi was not what it was today. Why are they walking the streets and driving around with computers in their fucking, like... What? And it's always the one they were chatting on. It's like, oh, we found a computer tower and it happened in the one you were using. What the fuck? Why is it in there, Jeff? Do people do, like... Remember, you know how, like, back in the day, we would you do, like, LAN parties where you'd bring your shit with you? Uh, does Jeff look like the type of person who's going to do a LAN party? I mean, Negative. Kind of. No. Uh, Chatterbait Billy uh, says, I wonder how he handled prison. You know, I was trying to look up stuff about, like, because I saw about, like, things about Roush and stuff, about his cellmate and stuff. I don't. I haven't found anything about Stacy and how he was in prison. I don't know. I mean, like... That's the thing. I, prison is one of those weird nebulous things because they're all their own animal. So, like, you can go into one and, and come out fine if you're, like, the, in the type of category that Jeff here is. Or you go in and you're fucking killed. Yeah. Chatterbait Billy says when uh, you get the urge, you have to stop by the side of the road and handle it. Yeah. <laughs> With your computer tower. These items can be released. But, like, again, <laughs> Is there's, there a there's like, no wireless car. It's 2006. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> oh, no. But, yeah, they were probably packing their hard drives with that shit. Okay. Yeah. Only on the phone on a portal. But then where's the power source <laughs> and the monitor? <laughs> or to get them released or something of that nature. Or once your case is finalized, if the judge has no objections, we can give that stuff back to you. But right now it has to stay. But it'll definitely. probably get burned or crushed or some other shit like that. Yeah, you'll never okay. get that back. Because fuck you, Jeff. Or about the evidence? No. Okay. I'm going to put this in your property so this will be your receipt for the stuff I took out of your car. All right? All right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to be dead anyway. Uh, Look at that. that. Even that detective was old. He was like in his 60s. They were probably packing their hard drives. That about yeah, sums it up. This game. Yeah, step over here towards Whoa! The look at the computers going through all the pictures like they do on the TV. Except Whoa. it's not making beeping noises. Should be going like beep boop, beep boop, boop boop. <laughs> no match found. Processing. Step over here. Just roll this. There you go. Just relax your hand. It's one of those inkless um, finger like print computers too, which I think are pretty cool. Yeah, left hand. Oh, that's fancy. Dark County, fancy. 2006. No, everybody had these. Okay, give me your right hand with your four fingers together. There you go. Like, law enforcement has a weird track record. It's kind of like the screw and the screwdriver. The screw was invented, like, it's whatever, hundreds of years before the screwdriver. So it's like this constant game of catch-up. And, like, this, the reason this, like, fingerprint machine reminds me of that is like get going digital like this can put it on a network where anybody can get at it where like for the longest time it was so easy to be a serial killer and or any sort of criminal because all you have to do is walk 10 feet over the county line and pff, you're a ghost mm -hmm. so it it's interesting and even back in 2006 because this thing probably cost like tens of thousands of dollars and then you know dreaded internet had to be put on it <laughs> Patrick Crowley says, is this internet or real life? <laughs> okay, now what I want you to do is just kind of turn your body. Let's get a nice butt print here, Jeff. Okay? <laughs> just really relax your hand, all right? This will really help identify you. <laughs> really relax that hand, Jeff. Oh, baby. <laughs> God, they take every square centimeter of your skin. <laughs> like, just put a whole palm print. Put your whole hand on it. And, you know, it must, like, in the same vein of, like, getting a haircut is like getting a weird scalp massage from a stranger. I've gotten my fingerprints taken for various things uh, throughout the years for jobs or whatever. And, like, when I was a kid, we did the safety cards. 
and like it is sort of a low key finger hand massage. <laughs> so it I like imagine yourself being in Jeff's position, like getting a one by one finger massage, but also knowing why you're getting it. Yeah. Chatterbait Billy says, I think that officer has a crush on Jeff. Look at how he's holding his hand. Yeah, like I That's be, what I'm saying. Like you look at how that cr- like that was a an attentive massage. That like, was a have confusing to to, thing. Yeah, you'd have to go <laughs> to like uh one of those fancy, like, heated rock massage parlors to get this sort of service. Yeah. And now it's time for the processing. Mm. Happy ending for Jeff. <laughs> Here goes the other hand. See, look at him. He's like, he's instantly calm. He hasn't brought up suicide the whole time he's been getting his hand massage. No. I think those sandals have those little, uh, you know, those Odita's slip on sandals that have like the those massage balls in the bottom. Oh, probably. <laughs> but here's the thing, too. Like, unless you're actively feeling thoughts of self-harm, I would never if I got caught for a crime, I would never say that I was thinking about harming myself because you get put on suicide watch. They put you in solitary confinement and you're already, if you weren't already on edge, you would all like automatically be shunted. Upon oh yeah. It. Because like, then they, they automatically treat you like a basket case. Like I, the two things that people do that confound me, cause they both lead nowhere. Good is what Jeff is doing here or doing the, by reason of mental disease or defect, because for whatever reason, people think that that is a shortcut out of the judicial system. Like, oh, he was crazy, or they were crazy, or they, he, she, they were crazy, whatever. Say, like, well, you know, don't do it again, you nut. No, like, it is just as long and complicated a process, and your life is gone. You're, like, in the mental health care system of the judicial system. Mm-hmm. And for what? Like, not everybody can be a fucking Casey Anthony or an O.J. Simpson and get off scot-free. It's just like don't commit the crime, but like that's not gonna happen. Right. Hand your hand just like that. Okay. Thumb in. There you go. Just like that. Just relax your hand. Just let it relax. Just like that. Just lay back and relax, Jeff. I was doing a karate chop motion. Camera yeah. is so far away. <laughs> well, I mean, this oh, takes a shit ton of time, so he's spending. A lot of time getting artsy shots that are going to make it into the edit, hopefully. Yeah, look at him. Oh, man. This is like a fucking 40-minute experience with this guy. He rolls the sleeve up for him. Oh, yeah. He's like... I, he, rubbing his forearm? Look at his fingers. Yeah, he's rubbing his forearm, definitely. <laughs> Patrick Crowley says, Jeff's thinking, I wish my wife would get here and set the police station on fire. Right ah! That was only 13 years later. <laughs> yeah. Holy fuck. Nice reference. <laughs> yeah, typical protocol for people's prints is uh, between 10 and 20, and Jeff got 800. <laughs> Someone's crushing hard at the uh, Ohio jail. Yeah, we've got like zero time left on this, so we'll just run out the clock with this depressed woman. Kayla says the cameraman is waiting and hoping for Jeff to moan a little as the finger massage continues. Uh, <laughs> worth it. Now he's in his big Hamburglar outfit. Oh, man. Look at him staring at that pen. He's like, should I try again? <laughs> Nobody's there to stop him, which is why he doesn't do it. Yeah, like that girl, that lady cop's not going to run This is hilarious. Around. They're like, oh, zoom in on the... Th- there he is. <laughs> oh, woof. Attempt. Woof. That's it. That's all she wrote. So, you know, uh, people that don't know or aren't familiar with TCAP, uh, he died of a quote-unquote overdose and also because of... He- <laughs> it was like an overdose with complications of obesity or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. His, uh, not surprisingly, a lot of people involved with TCAP have sketchy lives, but his seems to be, like, very noir, like, in, in a sad way. Like, God knows how Jeff got to be where, where and how he was when we just saw him in this video, but... What shook out and like, you know, all the suspicion on the wife and all her weird behavior. Yeah. And like he got married in 2018 to whoever his wife was. And like, do you think she killed him? Do you? I don't know. know. Much about like, it? I, I have not looked into it because it's like, yeah, what, what, what can come of it? It's not going to be 
outside of a few people in the TCAP community, and they'll I'll get it out through those leaves or that vine eventually anyway. But it does feel super sketchy. But then, you know, what is it with, with these people? Like all of the people who have filtered through to catch a predator have been in and out of the legal system before and after. So, you know, how do you say one life is weirder than the other? I mean, it's, it's tragic that I'm sure I shouldn't say I'm sure, but in my mind, yes, she had a plan because like someone like, like Jeff would be an easy target. All you'd have to do, like if in the narrative that I am now going to allegedly propose it's it wouldn't take much to like find out who and what he is, get in good with him, get it some insurance policies, and then bleh, when he's dead, no one will give a fuck because he's you know got that reputation. But it doesn't seem to have shaken out like that because of the fire and all the weird shit that happened. Because like if you're gonna do that, do that, pull a Nancy Brophy, but do it competently. Mm. Like you can. Like, nobody would have said, oh, Dan Brophy overdosed on heroin, so blah, blah, blah. But, you know, Jeff with his past and recent complications and addictions or whatever, it could be totally viable. Yeah. But then she was batshit insane and seems to not be benefiting from it. Yeah, Cheddarbait Billy says, I guess he just relapsed. I mean... Yeah, probably. If you're on... I mean, if if you have, you know... Yeah. I, well, that happens, too. Like, the the... Especially with Oxycontin or any opioids build up that tolerance and then go cold turkey or however you wean yourself off. When you relapse, you jump back into the dosage you had before, but now your tolerance is gone. And you snuff yourself out. So he was already like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say a drug addict, but he was already into that stuff before. I, I have no idea what the timeline is. I just know that he did have complications with drugs and so on and so forth. Do you know how long he was in prison for? I don't. I think not for I sure. Anyway. Find I think it. it was like a year for the first time or whatever. But <clears throat> that's the thing. It doesn't really matter because all of these people's stories are playing out before our very eyes. And this property is now getting so old that its original characters are dying. Yeah. So, you know, thank thank God for that weird half hearted second wave of Hanson versus Predator, which gave us Sokol and Dupe and all those other guys. But. Do you think something like like TCAP would ever come back? Not obviously not the no. same. No, 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 no. No, it would never. Like the 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 it was lightning in a bottle. Mm. It did something that I mean, because doing these stings is one thing. Like if it's just the cops and they go freeze, yada yada yada. But the public shaming of it all, I think everybody got a sour taste of. Especially Murphy. Yeah, and so that's how it shook out. It's mm. like, I no, because what it, what it, what happens is with everything like this is what exactly happened with it. To catch a predator came, it reached its arc. Like it was too progressive and too regressive at the same time because like it does feel like cruel and unusual punishment to like have these dudes live out their embarrassment on media for the rest of eternity but it did get people to feel like some justice was done well and it it, it brought a lot of awareness to, to that kind of stuff that right, i'm but sure what is what is awareness i mean the people who are here's the thing Every niche and every system needs to be filled. So no matter how much you raise awareness or funds or try to stamp out hunger or violence or this, that, or the other, it'll always be there. Well, no, I'm, yeah, I agree with that. It's always going to be there, but people probably weren't thinking of. Right, but that's what I'm saying is the point is it doesn't fucking matter. Think of it or don't think of it. Like you're going to be. The people you are helping are in a razor thin margin because like the people who are doing committed these crimes, I, I would hope aren't like a wide number. Yeah. So what like so it's not like a huge section of the population is getting victimized. So we're talking about 
mere individuals. Because, like, I was educated on, you know, don't let people touch where your underwear is and all the stuff we were taught as kids in case something weird sexually happened to you. And nothing ever happened. Yeah. So whether the awareness is there or not, I don't think it makes a fucking difference. Because And two, like, you can see if you're in the true crime community, you can't teach humans to be humans, you know, the same way every time. Because, you know, people will who are, know that abuse is wrong will stay in abusive relationships. They are subject to abuse. You know, even though all kids everywhere are told don't let adults do X, Y, Z, they'll do it because they trust the person or because they're ashamed or whatever. So it doesn't matter. Like, I realize we're, we're trying to be altruistic and like, oh, let's raise awareness and like move that needle a hair this way or that. But it doesn't matter. It's all for entertainment. Yeah. Chatterbait Billy says, I did and I need more. He needs more TCAP. <laughs> oh, I know. I, it's sad that it'll never happen again. But that's the thing. Like, He says, oh, he says, I agree. TCAP was just funny. At most, it probably got some cop, de- cop departments higher budgets for more stings. I don't know, though. Yeah, I mean, overall, I think it was a a positive thing because it, whatever. But that's just that's another element of this multifaceted, never to be recreated thing. Like, because it, it it had a bunch of things going for it. The Dateline had to somewhat, and obviously, it didn't do a great job, but still somewhat stay above board and ethical about everything. Yeah. Because they were working with the cops. And not only that, they had the nation watching. So they had, a, a you know, millions of eyes making sure everything was going okay. So there was, like, some accountability there. But, you know, fashionable ideas about punishments have changed. And, you know, it's not a big deal anymore. So, bah. So now it's just a bunch of dudes catfishing each other on YouTube and doing the skeeziest shit imaginable. But, you know, it's like the Jurassic Park movies. It started out being about dinosaurs, and now it's about crazy fucking super monsters. Yeah, Kayla says, TCAP did raise awareness enough that the later Predators recognized Hansen on site, so right, it didn't stop them from trying to... That's about her. all that it did. It, like, it, yeah. it got Chris Hansen more famous. Like, I'll, I'll say that. It rose awareness of the nation about Chris Hansen. Yeah, but it, it was funny when we watched... Uh, the TCAP Raw where Chris Hansen was talking, I think it maybe it was Ohio, when they were when they were like, We had nine hours of literally nothing. So like they're yeah. like, we didn't know if just word a, got a lot out. Of that we stuff I go, mm, I mm, how close knit is the community of people in this genre that like if they hear so there's a sting in town, like it goes through the whole community and none of the predators show up. I don't know about that. I think they're just weird coincidences. Mm. Maybe, yeah. But that's just the great thing about it. It's all a play. It's all this. It's it's like, you know, whatever. It's Survivor. It's a reality show done to be, you know, it's, it's what everybody wants. You want there to be a crime committed that gets solved where there was never really any danger. And if you can target people who literally everybody thinks is gross it's a win-win yeah because like and 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 this is also unique about it too it's like there's very few crimes in which you can entice people over to do it's almost exclusively sex crimes you're not going to get a serial killer to come over based on an internet (laughs) chat like you're not going to get someone to commit like bank fraud over at your house so i mean what else are you going to do and it just seemed like a layup, but, you know, it mishandled. The times were changing, yada, 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 and here we are. But we did it. That was the interrogation of, um, God damn it, Jeff Stacy, <laughs> the Mickey Mouse Predator. Which, I, yeah, I don't think he sounds from like From the, the Hanson interaction, yeah. not this. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so thank you, guys, thanks for showing up. Kayla, Chattery Billy, Patrick Crowley. Everybody Joey who Jojo. Joey Jojo, everybody who shows up and doesn't talk, I appreciate you as well. You know, you know, I get it. Sometimes you just want to watch stuff. Yeah. Uh, that is it, I guess. So uh, maybe next Wednesday we'll play a game. Definitely next Friday I'll have something else going on, but I don't know what. 
We'll see how that goes. I'll catch you guys next time, all right? Bye. Take care. Podcasts Radio.